Good morning, friends around the world. Let's begin our meditation, but first, let's consider a serious problem we have in our world today. The serious problem is about how we communicate with one another when we don't agree with the other person. Too often, I'm afraid, we speak without listening. We speak without any attempt to understand what the other person is saying, what they believe or how they feel. And when we do listen, our motives are often to think of ways or points that will invalidate, in our minds, what the other person is saying or believes. So today, I've chosen a story from Great Britain titled, Listening, by Roger Darlington. Martin was returning to work in his London office after spending two weeks with his brother over in New York. He was coming back with a heavy heart. It was not just that it was the end of a wonderful holiday. It was not just that he invariably suffered badly from jet lag. It was that Monday mornings always began with a team meeting. And over the months, he had grown to hate them. Martin was aware that colleagues approached these meetings with hidden agendas. They indulged in game playing, and he knew that the people were not being honest and open. The meetings themselves were bad enough, but then there was all the moaning afterwards. The usual people saying the usual things. I could have improved on that idea, but I wasn't going to say. I was thinking of making a suggestion, but I couldn't be bothered. As the morning's meeting began, Martin braced himself for the usual monotony. But as the meeting progressed, he became aware of a strange background noise. At first, he thought that he was still hearing the engine noise from the aircraft that had brought him back to London. But as he concentrated on the noise, it became a little clearer. <laughs> he realized to his amazement that he could hear what his colleagues were thinking as well as what they were saying. As he concentrated still harder, he found that he could actually hear what they were thinking at the same time as they were speaking. What surprised him even more than the acquisition of this strange power was that he discovered that what people were saying was not really what they were thinking. They were not making clear their reservations. They were not supporting views which they thought might be unpopular. They were not contributing their new insights. They were not volunteering their new ideas. Martin found it impossible not to respond to his new knowledge. So he started to make gentle interventions based on what he could hear his colleagues thinking than on what he heard them saying. So John... Are you really saying? Or, Susan, do you really think that? Tom, have you got an idea on how we could take this forward? He was aware that his colleagues were unsettled by how insightful were his interventions. They looked at him mystified. In truth, he felt rather proud of his newly acquired talent. Emboldened now, Martin forgot his usual misery at participating in such meetings and began making comments of his own. However, he became aware that some of his colleagues were looking at him quizzically. One or two even had a gentle smile playing on their lips. Only gradually did it dawn on him. <laughs> they could hear his thoughts, and he was not really saying what he was thinking. As the meeting progressed, Martin became aware of changes to the tone and the style of the events. It was clear to him now that one by one, each member of the meeting was learning how to hear the thoughts of all the others, and this was subtly changing how they interacted with one another. The game playing started to fall away. People started to speak more directly. Views became better understood. The atmosphere became more open and trusting. The meeting ended. As people left the room, Martin found that he could still hear what they were thinking. That was the best meeting we've ever had. All meetings should be like that. In the future, I'm going to say what I think. 
Let's take the rest of the time we have together this morning and think about this story. How did Martin acquire this magical gift? Why do you suppose the others in the meeting acquired this gift too? Can you and I acquire this gift as well? And finally, finish this sentence. Or maybe it's not so much a gift as it is what?